every single week we do the great search brought to you by DigiKey. Thank you, DigiKey, for supporting our show. Yay, thank you. And uh, Lady Ada, what are you looking for this week on the great search? Okay, so um, back to my computer. We are looking to use this chip, the Coral Accelerator module, and uh, machine learning accelerator chip. I want to make a breakout for it and maybe start, maybe, you know, implementing stuff for Raspberry Pi on it. I think that would be cool. It, however, has really, um, let's see, I have to find the location where it is. It has pretty serious power supply requirements. Um, if you go down to, hold on, power on sequence, power network, power delivery network design, it can, it normally drives, it normally draws about 500 milliamps, but it can spike up to three amps. Uh, very quickly, which means, first of all, we're going to need big-ass capacitors. Okay, so we'll get, maybe get the gigantic capacitors um, next week on the Great Search. But for now, I want to get some sort of buck regulator because I want to power this off of USB. I want something that will convert to about 4.5 to 5.5, down to 3.3 at like 3 plus amps, which is like not a small amount of current. I mean, like it's not a ton of current, believe me. I know people who are like, they deal with hundreds of amps of current. But for like, you know, small electronics, that's, that's quite a bit. So um, this is kind of an interesting thing because the normal way you s I would search is, you know, you go to DigiKey and you're like, well, I mean, maybe I'll search for 3.3 uh, buck converter, right? And you can do it this way. Um, you can go to, you know, DC, DC regulators, and you can search for them, but I'll say that there's actually almost like too many options like power supplies are if it's a linear regulator it's pretty easy but if it's a buck converter um the problem is there's there's like there's chips that can do buck and boost um there's ones that have fixed or um, adjustable voltages and it can get actually a little challenging because also you know you want the the current output but sometimes it's like the switch current and like the frequency i, I actually don't end up usually for, for power regulators like this, this is one of the few things that actually don't go straight to DigiKey, which is weird because you're like, why am I watching the great search if you're not actually going to search on DigiKey? But what happens is I search at, I, you know, I look to see what kind of company makes the parts I'm looking for, and then I look on their site because they're just going to be much better at, um, like, for example, you still have to deal with like things like, you know, thermal management and efficiency, and you're going to be able to get much more specific searches on those sites for this specific type of problem. I'll say the same thing for microcontrollers. Power supply managers and microcontrollers are the two things where I usually go to the manufacturer page, and then I bounce back to Jiki to find, like, what's in stock and what's available, and I kind of go between the two. So um, I happen to like TI... Uh, buck converters, I do make a ton of them. Another thing is, I have to say, I'm very picky. I actually kind of like the latest converters. I know that there's like, you know, the oldies and goodies, the LM like 76s or whatever, but I really like to have kind of the latest. So what I end up doing is I end up going to TI's website. And if you buy samples from TI, by the way, they ship the DigiKey. And then here I go through to products and power management. Now again, I don't do this for everything, but I do do this for some boost and buck converters, especially ones where I'm, I'm, I'm very specific about, I need like very high current or very specific voltage or specific, very um, specific requirements, not just like, oh, generic, you know, I just need like 100 milliamps at five volts. You can get that anywhere. But three, uh, three to four amps from uh, to three volts is a little tougher. So, um, I'm going to look for buck regulators, and I don't want ones with the integrated inductor. I'm not super into those yet. They're cool, but I, I'm not quite ready. I don't know. Maybe maybe next year I'll be ready for those. I, I like to have the separate um, regula uh, inductor. So um, they have a couple different options. They have a controller. These are where you have external MOSFETs. This is great for extraordinarily high currents, extremely high voltages, like really like weird messed up situations that I don't usually deal with. Um, for most things, I just want a converter. I want it to regulate it. It has a built-in MOSFETs. I just give it capacitor inductor. I'm good to go. So this 
most people make you happy. And this is what I really like. It's like they have this very nice search system, like the quick search, where I just kind of give it approximately what I want and it will give me options. Um, and it will kind of winnow through all, like, you know, there's like a hundred different buck converters. So for USB, you know, basically the voltage can be as little as four volts. I know 4.5 is the specification, but you know, if I'm, if I'm pulling a lot of current, I want it to be able to run down at four volts. Um, the max is going to be 5.5. I want 3.3 volt output and I want 3.5 amps. And you're like, well, wait a minute, you, you know, the data sheet said three amps. I know, but I like to give it always like 10, 15% extra. That seems like a wise idea. So, and I don't care about the quiescent because this isn't battery powered. This thing is going to be plugged into the wall. So who cares about the quiescent? No problem. And you can see that there's more, you know, you can do the little draggy drops and, and, and change this around if you want. Um, I can adjust the, the current maximum and, and the duty cycle requirements. Um, you know, I don't really care about the safety category. Um, for the package groups, you know, I, I don't want BGAs, but I don't think I need to mess with this yet. Um, for rating, I don't need automotive. Usually there's an automotive version and a, and a catalog version. I, you know, I'll just cut it in half by only looking at those. And then, so, you know, now you only have a couple options, which is really nice. I like that. There's, there's not a lot of um, things you have to worry about. There's, there's only a couple options. And um, you can look at the, the packages, you know, to see, get an idea of, like, some of these are kind of big. They're HT SOPs, and I don't really want those. Um, but, you know, the top one is kind of nifty. I mean, first off, it's, it's inexpensive. It runs at a kind of a mind-boggling 2.4 megahertz, uh, which is, you know, nothing for a microcontroller, but for um, a converter, it's quite high. And it's only six pins. And, you know, I'm really into small number of pins. <laughs> Smaller the better. Um, the, but there's a couple other good options. There's the TPS 62095. I've used the TPS 62 series quite a bit. Um, it's, a, it's a lovely little series. So I can check out all these, but let's maybe start with this one. Um, and then you can, you know, you can actually go into like these other like web bench designers. I actually haven't used this before, but you can like do simulations and stuff. Um, you can check out the data sheet. Let me open up the data sheet. And, um, yeah, so it's a, it's a series that's available in different currents, which is actually kind of nice. I like that. It's like you can, you can, you know, pick this up with the, the internal MOSFETs have different current, uh, ca carrying capacity. You'll have to, uh, um, have more, um, capacitance, of course, and a different size inductor. But for the most part, you can, you can pick which one you like. And, uh, this seems, you know, nice and simple, right? You know, you just, you just need an inductor, a couple capacitors. Thing is, you know, you're not going to get um, great efficiency at uh, four amp current, but let's see, you know, V out 3.3 at uh, from V in, okay, like you know, 90-ish percent. So that's not bad. I think this is pretty good. So this might be a good option. And then what I do is once I I find this, I take the the beginning part of the um, the part number because you can see it's a series the x means it's like you know it's one two three four for like one two three four amps i go here and then i just type it in and i can see what the options are so there's actually a couple things there's uh ooh, new there's some new dev boards so um they do have an eval board you know i usually don't get eval boards but for power supplies i sometimes do because um, power supply layout, you really, you know, you can look at the Gerbers, but sometimes having it, it's very handy. You can really see if you're able, I, I've designed power supplies and, you know, not been, had like two ounce copper, not had four layer PCBs, and I haven't quite gotten the current output I was expecting. And sometimes getting the eval board helps me determine, is it the chip or is it my layout? Is it like my capacitor inductor or is it, you know, what is it that is keeping me from getting what I think I should be getting out of the power supply. So I'll probably pick up one of these eval boards, 60 bucks, it's not, you know, it's not bad. And then um, over here, I've got the regulators and it looks like there's a couple options, fixed and not. And then this is the full series. 
So this is the uh, one that I want. I think this one is the four amp version. So they have a couple in stock. Um, and yeah, you know, when you get to a tip and wheel, they're 88 cents, which is a good deal. You know, with the inductors, you know, the inductor is like maybe, you know, a dollar capacitor for, sorry, a dollar for the capacitor inductors. Whole power supply is maybe two bucks. Um, it's active. You know, you can download, um, looks like they have a CAD model even, so I can get started instantly. And uh, I like that it's just small, you know, like it's small. I don't need a special heat sinking. Um, I'll just check the data sheet to make sure that I can, uh, I can use this on a two layer board and I'll plug this next to the core module and uh, I'll try it out. I'll just try, you know, decoding a couple uh, models, like, you know, vision models. And first off, see if I can get the performance and then use my oscilloscope um, to make sure that my 3.3 volt line is nice and steady. So that's the next step for this design. So very excited. The TPS 62 Okay, and that's this week's The Buck Converter of the Week. Great search for Digicate. Where is